there. I saw. Elena, I saw you were, your name is there. Yep. Yeah. Hello, hello. I'm here. There she is. Can you, do you have a few words to say about your piece? Um, maybe, but just in case I'm curious, can I share my own screen? May I try this? Um, because I... I'll try it. I, I don't know that I've got it set up that way, honestly. Um, Joe, if yeah, you, you're Joe, if you mm -hmm. click on her square on the three dots on the top of her picture, there's a drop down menu and it says, yeah, is it in there? Yeah, as co host, allow Elena to be co host and then she can share her screen. Oh, okay. Just interesting. I hadn't thought about the co hosting piece, but yeah, okay. Go ahead, Elena. That's your, it's all, it's all you. And I'll spotlight you. All right, all right no, just uh, a little bit. Uh, there you go. The same uh, picture, but only framed, and uh, I added some several pieces to this uh, canvas. Uh, it's acrylic, and uh, here is just some, I don't know, um, enchanted garden, maybe uh, stylized uh, flowers. Um, I uh, hope that uh, you can get feeling of tranquility, calmness from mm -hmm. this piece because of greenish color. And I used here a limited palette. It was just several colors like um, turquoise and uh, ochre, like yellow brown color and white and uh, gray. That's it, only four colors. And uh, uh, you cannot see it here, but actually, uh, also, here is a bronze color, and uh, uh, when it's sunlight or just lighting from a uh, source of light, uh, it will be shining. Some part of this uh, picture will, will shine. Beautiful piece. I love the colors. And you're right, you do get a sense of tranquility that, with that. And they are kind of flowing in in their, I don't know, some mm -hmm. ethereal. It's atmosphere, and uh, I don't know, just uh, uh, some piece of nature. But at the same time, it's fantasy. You can imagine whatever you want. Very nice piece. This this is in the members show. So we mm -hmm. moved off of the solo artists and moved on to the members show and Elena's pieces in, in that show. And we have a few other of yep. our members that are still here that have pieces in the members show. So um, I don't know whether I have a microphone. Can anyone hear me? Yeah. Yes, you do, Robert. Okay. <laughs> I don't know who Joe's coming up with next. Hang on, hang next, on. So. All right, Elena, can you stop sharing your screen, please? Um, yeah, I'll try. Okay. Thank you. Looks that like... worked. <laughs> okay, so now we do have Robert here. So we're going to go to his piece next. And there you are. Do you want me to talk about it? Absolutely. Hi, Bob. Uh, this did not start off as nocturnal, and originally there wasn't snow in the foreground. It evolved this way. There was snow in the background, and when I hiked to this point, it was dry where my feet were. You're on top of a uh, Nordoff Ridge, and you're looking over towards Hines Peak and uh, the top of Topa Topa Bluffs. And Robert, you know this is... Is this an oil painting? Yes. And you know what size is it? It's about 30 by 25 and it's $300. Excellent, excellent. Tell us a little bit, Robert, about starting to do the nocturnals. You haven't in the past done them. And now just this past year, you recently started. And uh, each time I do a nocturnal, the sky gets four to five coats of the dark color before I put the first star in. So, uh, 
And I noticed this when I took it in, there's some cracking on it where you can see uh, a little white coming through on some of the black places in the sky. That might be because it's drying unevenly, I'm not sure. I haven't seen that on any of the other nocturnals so far. Looks like stars. <laughs> yeah, or it's the Milky Way. All right, so now is, is is Lois Freeman Fox here? No, Lois isn't here, but Margie Margie Murray is Margie here. Margie Murray is here. All right, let's do Margie's. And I think Margie's got two pieces. She does. Margie, can you unmute? Margie. Hi. <laughs> there she is. Tell well, us about was, your pair. Uh, this was actually an Oddmont. I had a composition and I loved this one pair and I wasn't happy with the other one, so I just cut it out. <laughs> 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 and I thought I started out with a, a a black background, but then I loved bringing in the purple tone against the uh, the green. Yeah. Good decision. Really good. And that's a six by six oil. And what's the price on that, Margie? I forgot. <laughs> Let me check my notes. Let me 420, check. 425. That sounds right. And here's another one of Margie's. And this is a pho photograph that I did. In the harbor. Yes. And I, um, uh, I went through a period after I had some uh, oral surgery where I just didn't have the energy to paint and I always like like taking photographs so I would uh, go for an hour or two sit down to the harbor and take a bunch of shots and then I would crop them and you know uh, someone said to me well it looks the it looks a little smoky <laughs> because that was at the time of the fire so it was smoky um, but it was really great to get out and uh, my dog loved it. It was the only hassle with that is when he would come home, I usually had to give him a bath. He had so much sand and his paws and everywhere. So I've done a series now of the Harbor photographs. I have another one that I'm uh, doing and I do these on uh, canvas. So it's actually a process where the paint is laid into the uh, canvas. That makes sense. And what's the price and size on this, Marge? Uh, this one is... I I've think got it one. if you want. 30 by 20 and it's 700. And it's beautifully framed. Uh, you don't see the frame on this. But mm -hmm. I did a, a white frame on it. And, uh, you know, I think the framing was about $240. <laughs> wow. But it was well worth it. Good. Nice photo. Yeah. Thank you. I All think right. the, the only person from the member show that we have left is Kimberly Ann. But I saw her stand up. She was the first yeah. person in, and we're leaving her towards the end. <laughs> Really no, you always save the best for the end. Now, come yes. on. Yeah, well, okay, <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Kimberly Ann, you're up. Kimberly Ann's got three pieces. Oh, well, um, I don't have that. Stephen has that. Oh, well, me? this one was sold. Yes, this yeah. one was sold. Stephen oh, has okay. that. My yes. fan club has that. Yes. <laughs> My fan club, they are. Um, I started doing mixed media pieces like this, okay, for backgrounds. That's how I started out. And we were supposed to make a junk journal. And I thought, I don't want to paint over that. I like those. So I started using them for backgrounds. So I made this. You can't see it really good. 
to replace the Frida. But I liked it so much, I decided you can't have it. I was going <laughs> to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> but I also did this one, and this was in my grandmother's. So I started using the backgrounds to do memorial pieces of my family. And then they kind of went to, well, you know, a lot of people really like Guadalupe. And so I started doing these as gifts for people. And they were so popular that um, I just started putting them in the gallery. And if, you look, and if you look at the ones that are now in the artisan shop, you'll notice that those are really humorous. I decided to start adding some humor as well as seriousness. And they're all about eight by eight. And I think they're all $75. And I did do a couple for Spicetopia. I did this one, which is Frida. With, with I don't know if you can see the heart I painted on it. But these are my own photographs. On this one, I decided to go back to my photography and use my photographs. And the background is the sheet music called La Golondrina, which La Golondrina is a, is a swallow. And um, it kind of reminded me of Frida. And then this is the next one for Slice Topia. And hey, it Kim just, Leanne, you know, you know, you're gonna you're using your time up for the next the next meeting when we do the small image show. <laughs> small image show. We're okay. gonna do the same thing with small image. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay. Well, what's the next piece? Kimberly Ann's got another piece. She what's does, the, and this is the really neat. It's it's just another homage to Guadalupe mm. um, that a lot of my friends like these and um, they're kind of religious and Catholic. So, hey, William, where do you get the material for this? Is it something you look for? Is it in your stash or how do you, how do you where do you find it? Um, you, you can't really see behind me, but there is a um, I have all these like fifteen by fifteen file boxes. Mm. And they're filled with papers and ephemera and sheet music and um, newspapers in different languages. And I just ordered a whole bunch of books and some are in French and some are in Spanish, some are in Japanese. And I just like collect them and cut them up and use them. And the background for this is actually, I shouldn't even tell you, I think it's Tim Holt. Huh. I think it's Tim Holt. Tim Holtz, H-O-L-T-Z, Ephemera. He does a lot of this work himself. And what he did is a lot of the backgrounds he put together and a lot of the pieces, he started selling parts. And so you can just buy it. Nice, nice. I, thank you. I prefer to do my own backgrounds, but sometimes these are easier and they have mm -hmm. the colors that I will not necessarily work in. Nice. The one that's in the gallery now, it's, was it reds and oranges? Yeah, that replaced the Frida. Those aren't mm -hmm. colors that I normally work in. So it forces me to work in colors that other people like. Because otherwise both, I'd never put anything out or sell anything. Yeah, and both of your pieces are uh, nine by nine and they're $75 each. Uh-huh. Good. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Um, Thank you. So let me cover some of the other ones. This is from Lois Freeman Fox. This is an oil on canvas. It's 37 inches by 19 inches, and it's $900. What one? I can't see it. can't see it. Oh, I was bitten by the old share screen bug. I see nothing. Um, let me do this. Since we're jumping around Not here. This. Where's my scissors? Uh, now let's do it this way. All right. This is go. from Lois Freeman Fox. Oh. And it's 37 by 19. It's oil on canvas and it's $300. Does wonderful portraits. Yeah, she does. She does great portraits. This is from Imra Rabel, and it's a photo on metal. It's 20 by 30, and it's $350. Oh, 
This is also from Emma Ravel, and it's a 20 by 30 photo on metal, and it's $350. This is from Mary Kay Lambert. Two. And this is 10 by seven. It's a watercolor on watercolor paper and it's selling for $45. This is also from Mary Kay Lambert. It's 10 by seven. It's a watercolor on watercolor paper and it's $30. And this is from Meryl Goody. Howdy. Howdy. <laughs> I apologize for butchering the name. Okay. Um, this is a 16 by 20 oil on canvas, and this is $300. This is also from Merrill Gowdy. It's, it's called Celebration of a New Day. It's 16 by 20 oil on canvas for $300. This is called Crater Lake, Oregon. From Merrill Gowdy, it's a 16 by 20 oil on canvas, and that's $300. This is from Bonnie Kwan. I actually love this one. I love the colors in this. Really do. Um, it's 27 by 27. It's a print on watercolor paper, and it's $145. I forget. And I think that is every, all of the. I think that's it. That's it from all the members show. And thank and thank you very much, uh, Joe, for for making this work. Oh, it's my pleasure. I, I you know I, I totally agree with you, Darlene. I think this is the kind of thing that um, we should continue. Um, it's interesting because when you have when you have the first Fridays, of course, you have the intimacy and you have the physical contact and relationship. But here you have like everybody's attention. So everybody can hear what everybody else is talking about. And that, that's something you don't necessarily get when you're in a first Friday meeting because there's a group over here and there's a group over here and somebody comes and somebody goes. And so it is a different experience. So I definitely think it is something to continue. Um, and frankly, I'm very pleased with the turnout tonight for this being the first one and the fact that we ran into a glitch yesterday, had to hustle around and get the correct link out. I mean, yeah, I'm quite pleased. I think Fern is trying, Fern's trying to put up his hand. Don, Don, go ahead. Um, Don, you're on mute. I'm sure you're saying something incredibly amazing, but you're on mute, Don. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Oh, to the members, there's a, there's, I'm going in, going to go into the members uh, presentations. Laura? I agree. I think it's wonderful to hear people's process and the ideas behind their thinking. Yeah, I, I applaud everyone for, for, I love learning about that. And I was watching the chat and there was a lot of comments and back and forth in the chat too, more than I would have expected. And I thought that was pretty valuable. I'd, I'd love to see workshops. Now I've seen three different things. I've got what I do and how maybe what painting in the Asian style is different from traditional watercolors, how to use a computer in tandem with photography. I think that would be a great workshop. Mm -hmm. uh, a collage workshop would be would be really nice, um, you know. Maybe bringing your own stuff and and coming away from from it with your own piece or whatever. Um, anyway, I, I think that kind of thing is worth uh, jawboning about, and and uh, there are probably I don't know ten to other different kinds of ways that people work that would be worth exploring. Laura. Oh, okay. Michelle. Yeah, I wanted to um, talk to um, Darlene about your artwork, um, I, back in the day when, well, actually, uh, doing with photography, and that you're taking it into the graphic arts, and it's just beautiful, and your, your uh, black and white uh, daisy uh, that looked so much like a watercolor, it was exquisite. It's just, 
you know, such thank beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it was really nice to see. It's thank high time. Yeah. Yeah, I, and, and it was interesting. Uh, the thing we don't get in uh, the first Fridays is actually hearing from everybody. I mean, with, mm -hmm. you know, when you're all eating and drinking and having a good time, um, you you don't hear, you don't have everybody standing up and giving a, a little um, presentation. And, um, you know, to hear from every, to hear what people are doing, it made me have, I took notes on of what, of uh, all the pieces because there's a lot of thought that goes into it and I wanted to make sure I remembered for each one, but everybody's pieces, all the thought that goes into it and then you go back and you look at it and you know so much more, you look at it in a different way of, of seeing it because you know what they said about it. You're like, oh my goodness, I never saw that or, or that's really, you know, it just adds something to it. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. In fact, this is the kind of thing that we we see in our in the Abstract Artist Collective, um, and and also even to a to a certain degree, even in the Getting to Know series that we're running. Um, for those who don't know, there's an Abstract Artist Collective that meets once a month, and it's an art abstract artist. It doesn't mean painters. It could be collage people, fabric people, any it could be any any medium that they choose. And the thing that everybody keeps saying is it's the it's the cross pollination of discussion. And especially when it comes to process, people really are interested in how people do their stuff. And it, that's been one of the most successful things in running that collective. And when we talk in the getting to know series, we usually talk we're talking about a particular artist. And I'll throw a plug in here next Wednesday. We're talking about Mark Bradford. There'll be a couple of videos. It'll be a discussion around his process. And Mark is a collage and painter, uh, paint artist, um, does absolutely phenomenal work. But the, it's the discussion afterwards that is just, it's priceless. It really is. It's, it's just a real enjoyable time getting with other artists and, and having those conversations. So this is just another added piece to that, to that you know, that experience. Joe, is, is that a Zoom uh conference and yes. is it possible to get the link somewhere you know what chris uh, i think what i'll do you know what i think sharon's going to send out the link to the next getting to know series yes. which is next wednesday she's going to publish yep. that i'm, I'm okay. planning we'll on sending out an email thing. tomorrow yeah and we'll do the same thing with the the abstract artist collective as well because it's just even if you're not an abstract artist, we have people that come in that, that paint more realistically. And when I say abstract, it's not not it's not just non-objective. It could be very it could be very relational, very you know, very realistic. Um, but it's just it's just a good gathering. It's a, it's I really have I'm I'm not on mute anymore. I think. Oh, there's John. Uh, okay. John. Hi, John. Um, uh, you know this um, watching everything here. It seems so successful to me. I'm wondering if maybe uh, demonstrations could be arranged the same way with some of the seasoned artists that are in the uh, in our association. Right. Absolutely, and you know, honestly, um, I've I've just gotten some equipment. If you have an, if you happen to have an iPad and a computer, um, for about forty dollars, you can be set up to really do a nice demo with two screens. Um, you've got the computer screen in front of you. But what I also have, I just picked up is a, um, it's a microphone stand with it with an attachment that will hold an iPad. So you basically have the, the microphone stand come like this. Mm -hmm. And you have the iPad in here. And you use that as your overall your overhead camera, and then you can demo whatever you whatever you'd like. We could so, also uh, uh, Don, the um, you do you still go out and do plein air? Because um, we actually could go out and do live streaming or do the Zoom. Uh, uh, Fern, Fern uh, won't let me do anything. I'm sequestered. I'm totally sequestered. Oh, yeah, it's a pretty okay, tough time right okay. now. Yeah, I'm. I'm afraid I'm hidden away. Yeah, that's right. I, what did I, What was I thinking? Of course. 
Yeah. Well, this but is, when, this is, but when, when there's a chance to go out and paint, I'll be the first to be out there, believe me. Nice to see you, yeah. Hi, Don. Dave, Dave, Dave Dial was also here. Is, I don't know if he's still here, but. I'm both, still here. Yeah. I mean, hi. Yeah, I want to say hello and say hi to Don Fay. Hi, buddy. Yeah, we haven't painted together for weeks now. Yeah, <laughs> it's, um, we've, we've got to kill off this virus. Yep. That's an idea. For sure. It's nice oh. to see you both, really, or all of everybody. There's so many. Uh, Joe? Yeah. Spreading it. I, I can see you doing a demo on how to do um, what you were just talking about. That's exactly what I was thinking, Darlene, is that I can do a demo of how to demo. Yes. You know, really, I and, mean. Well, if yeah. you have a third person taking a video of what you're doing and swinging from one to the other, and monitor, you know, uh, you're talking about it, but they're showing the different parts. Uh, as a visual person, that would make a lot more sense to me than you're telling me. Um, I'm a, not an audio learner, I'm a visual learner. And so I would see that and sort of under, oh, that's how to do it. Now, yeah, you just, you know, in your copious you, free time. To give you an idea, I also have my iPad hooked up to this. So if you if you scroll if you scroll in fact what I'll do is I'll I'm gonna I saw that it was so I'm yep. gonna spotlight it so this is my iPad and what I all I need to do is this and I have a demonstration camera uh huh and all and what I have is I just have a device that will hold it like this and it involves a microphone stand and a and a holder basically. Is that because you have screen sharing? Um, no, this becomes what happens is this is simply a separate instance of. Okay, fine. Um, this is just this is just like having another person in the. Uh, in other words, there's two of me. Yeah. You can also record it and post it, or have it have the demo. Oh yeah as part of your, as, as the initial part of your presentation and then talk about it. Right. Absolutely, yeah. you, could, you, could, you could record it on your own, pre-record it, and then show that and then take questions or you know, speak to it afterwards. Absolutely, absolutely. And I would say if anybody you know, has, has something they'd like to do, and honestly, Chris, some of the work that I've seen you do, I think people would love to see your process on that. Um, right. That would be something, and I'd be willing to work with you in terms of, you know, producing something like that. Um, so, yeah, I think that there's so much we can do with this technology. There, there really is, and um, that's Joe, where we're going to. That's where we're going to be going, and that's what we're going to be exploring. Michelle, I was wondering, what would you think, and we can pursue the thought of having like a regular monthly meeting when we have a demo, and just yeah. bring the group together so that we're. Because this is this has just been so nice to see everybody. If we knew we were going to be doing it like once a month is not too much at all. Well, we talked about that as on the board, and I think yeah. that is something we definitely need to pursue. And I've, I've been very heartened by the number of participants we had come out tonight. I mean, it's, it's down a little bit now, but we've had over forty people here, yep. and I think that's wonderful. 